What is glorification? Glorification is little understood. Christians talk a lot about the rapture of the church. It's certainly an event to look forward to with great anticipation. We're all hoping our removal from this earth is imminent. I talk about the qualifications necessary to be included in that event because, as Jesus said, only a few will, a very few, will qualify. He numbers the whole body of Christ in the tens of thousands. That's not very many, to be sure, out of probably 14 billion who have lived and are living now combined on the earth. To understand this and all the details and the chronology of these last moments of the age, and to be sure you are among those who do qualify, read my book, The Rapture, The Tribulation, and Beyond, which is about 434 pages, and you can find it on my website, bdhyman.com. It will untangle all the confused teaching that you have heard and make sense of it all. But now, I want to talk to you specifically about the event that precedes the rapture of the church, the glorification. This glorification is when, at the sounding of the final trump, the dead in Christ, those who are in the body of Christ who have already moved on to heaven, will be resurrected together with we who are alive and remain on the earth we will all be changed together. Those dead in Christ who will rise and we who are alive and remain. The total body of Christ for all time. We will be changed in the twinkling of an eye. Glorified in the twinkling of an eye. Now, we need to understand what this means. What does it mean to be glorified? Well, first, all the fallen nature of our flesh will be removed. It will be gone. And we will become incorruptible and move into God's supernatural realm to be as Jesus was after his resurrection. Yes, that's right. We're going to become as Jesus. There are so many scriptures that say this, that we will become as he was. This is a supernatural transformation. We will still have a physical body but it will be a purified, holy, and glorious supernatural body. Jesus, after his resurrection, when he was glorified as a man, now we know he was God, he could do anything, but as a physical man, he was glorified to show us what was waiting for us. He could be touched, he could eat, and he could also walk through walls and move from one place to another in the blink of an eye just by thinking he was in another place. Supernatural transport was part of what he showed us. We will be able to move anywhere on the planet or back and forth to the heavenlies, from the heavenlies to earth and back again in a nanosecond, just like Jesus, being glorified prior to being taken up Otherwise, we couldn't be taken up just as natural people. We would have to be glorified. So this is something that you must understand and be in faith for, just like the rapture. In 1 Corinthians 15, 49 through 54, the word says, And as we have become the image of, of the man of dust, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly man, meaning Jesus. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this incorruptible must put on, 
I'm sorry, for this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible has put on incorruption, and this mortal has put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. This is an awesome thing. You will become, as God always intended you to be, able to dwell in his realm with him in the likeness of Jesus whose body you are. You are a member of his body and you will be like him. This glorification is the process that delivers us finally from the bondage of this world and the fallen nature of the flesh so that we can dwell with the Godhead forever in the heavenly realms. We will be able to go back and forth from the heavens to the earth and back again because, as I will explain as we go along, we will be kingdom government over the nations. After the great tribulation is over and we ride back from New Jerusalem as the army of God with Jesus at our head for the final battle of Armageddon, where we destroy with Jesus the 200 million man army of Antichrist. It's going to be an extraordinary sight. Uh, just for miles and miles and miles, these people will just melt like wax, as the word says. And God then will restore the earth for the millennial reign, a thousand years of perfect peace. The body of Christ will become kingdom government over the nations of the earth. We will rule and reign with Christ. To find out who these nations are, who they are comprised of, and the proof that our rapture is right before the great tribulation, right before it begins, read my book, The Rapture, The Tribulation, and Beyond. It's vital that you know all the details so that you don't become confused and disqualified from your future reward in Christ. One factor that confuses most Christians and presents them the quandary of what they should believe is the timing of the rapture. This quandary, this confusion, prevents them from being confident in the pre-tribulation rapture of the church. And it is the fact that there are seven raptures. Yes, seven raptures. Three have already taken place. We are the next one to come, the fourth one. And then there are three more during the Great Tribulation for different groups, not for the church. Our rapture is the fourth one. If we miss that one, we've missed it. The scriptures that establish this are also in my book. I really want you to read this book because it, it clarifies all of these events, puts them in chronological order so that you can understand them, and ties them all to abundant scripture so you can see the truth. And in my book, as well as the answers to your many other questions about the end of time, you will understand these seven raptures, who they're for, the ones that have come before, the one that is for us, and the ones to come during the tribulation. In Romans 5, 1 and 2, Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. We have peace with him. That means wholeness. Through whom we have access by faith into this grace in which we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. This is the glorification. This is what we're talking about, the glory of God. We partake of this glory. In Romans 8, 18, for if you live according to the flesh, if you live according to the flesh, you will die. 
But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the flesh, you will live. You will live. And then it goes on to say, For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. The glory which shall be revealed in us. This is what the Lord is talking about. The glorification that happens when the trump sounds. Which has to happen before we can be supernaturally transported to the heavenlies. We can't be there as just normal flesh and blood people. We can't be there as corruptible people. We have to be glorified so we are incorruptible and caused to become beings as Christ is that can move throughout the heavenlies as well as on the earth. 2 Thessalonians 2, 14 says, to which he called you by our gospel for the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Obtaining of the glory. This is something that the Lord has provided and set aside for us. And it's, it's absolutely extraordinary. In Colossians 3, 4, when Christ, who is our life, appears, when the trump sounds, he will appear, then you also will appear with him in glory. You will appear with him in glory. All of these things refer to the glorification. In Colossians 1, 27, to them God will to make known what are the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. The hope of glory. This is what we're talking about, but you must be truly in Christ, a member of his body, obedient to his commandments and his word in all things. In 1 Peter 5, 1, the elders who are among you, I exhort, I, who am a fellow elder and a witness of the sufferings of Christ, and also a partaker of the glory that will be revealed. Future tense. The glory that will be revealed. There are these just are only a few of the scriptures that refer to our glorification, which will transform us into the image of Christ, into supernatural beings, so that we can become part of God's supernatural kingdom, ruling and reigning with him over the nations for the rest of eternity. You really need to fully understand this so that you can be in faith for it. You don't want to be left out. You don't want to be confused and hesitate when that trump sounds. You need to be able to grab hold of this knowledge of glorification by faith. Everything is received by faith. So you need to know where you're going and what you're going to be doing so that you can be ready for it. You can't make it happen, but you have to be ready to receive it. My book will explain all of these things. So I encourage you to get it and understand so that you can't be confused and talked out of this awesome place that God has made for you. If you have any questions, you can email me at answers at bdhyman.com or call me at the phone number that's on my website, bdhyman.com. And remember, the better you know the word, the better you know God. Amen.